Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. This is Lesson 11, Efficacy of Scientific Notation. Okay, so let's take a look at that word right here. So this word right here, if I bring this up in a dictionary on the internet, efficacy is how it's pronounced. It's a noun. It is the ability to produce a desired or intended result. So all that is saying is we're going to produce a desired result using scientific notation. That's all it means. Okay, so let's continue. Exercise one says the mass of a proton, which is just a minute portion of an atom, is this number here in scientific notation it is so this is just re, re reviewing that d has to be between 1 and 10 or should i say between 0 and 10. it can be 1 it can be 9 but nothing less than 1 and nothing more than 9. so in order to put the decimal in the right location it's got to go right here so it's going to be 1.6 Seven two six two two times ten to the power of however many decimals I have to move it to the left to get this number. So I have to move it to the left three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty one, twenty four, twenty seven places. So that's going to be a negative. 27 because I'm moving it to the left and making a number that is really, really, really small. Okay, exercise two. The mass of an electron is this number. In scientific notation, it is. So I need a number between 0 and 10. So my decimal is going to go in this point right here. So I know my number is going to be 9.10. 38291 times 10 and then I need to count how many spaces it's going to be. I'm going to these are all grouped in threes, so I'm going to leave that 9 hanging out there for a minute. Here's 3 6 9 12 15 18 21 24 27 30 and then there's one more. So that'd be 31 I moved it to the left, so it's negative. So that in scientific notation is 9.1 times 10 to the negative 30 for 1. Okay, so now it says write the ratio that compares the mass of a proton to the mass of an electron. So the mass of the proton was up here, and this is the electron. So I would say 1.672 6, 2, 2 times 10 to the negative 27. And when we write a ratio, we can use the word 2 or we can use a colon. And then it'd be 9.10938291 times 10 to the negative 31. So there's our ratio comparing the two. I could also write it as a fraction. The first number is your numerator, the second number is your denominator. Okay. Exercise four, it says to compute how many times heavier a proton is than an electron. Okay, so it wants to know how many times heavier a proton is than an electron. So what they're saying is a proton equals some value times the mass of an electron. Proton equals some number times an electron. So if I substitute in my values, the proton was... Let me go back. The proton ratio of the proton is right here. The mass of a proton is this number, 1.672. So the proton is 1.672622 times 10 to the negative 27 equals some number y times the mass of the electron, which was 9.1093891 times 
10 to the negative 31. Okay, so here's our equation. So they're asking us how many times, well that is our y, and this is multiplication, so I could also do this. Y, some number times this equals this. Well, in order to find that value, we are going to divide. So I'm going to divide both sides by 9.10938291 times 10 to the negative 31. And what I do to one side, I must do to the other. So it's going to be 9.10938291 times 10 to the negative 31. These cancel because anything divided by itself is 1, and we're left with y equals. That is the answer to this question. The number of times greater one is than the other. In order to solve this problem now, I'm going to use my calculator. And let me get it. Okay, so to save time, I brought my calculator up. I did the division already. It is 0.183615, and so on and so on and so forth. Okay, so 0.183615. Okay. 2917. Okay, so now I'm just going to move this over. So the calculator's out of the way now. So there's my number. 0.183615297 times 10 to the... Now, when we're dividing, our exponents get subtracted, so it's going to be negative 27 minus a negative 31. Be careful with that. And we're going to end up with 0.183615297 times 10 to the negative 27 minus a negative means plus. Negative 27 plus 31 is 4. Okay, be careful with your rule of D, and I have to have the decimal move to this location because this is 0 0.18, and 0 is not equal to or greater than 1. So my new answer is going to be 1.83615297 times 10, and I've moved it one step closer to where it needs to be, so I'm going to reduce the exponent by 1. So that is going to be to the third power. And that means to move the decimal three places. So if I move this decimal one, two, three, I get the number 1,836.15. So this is an approximation. So it is approximately 1,836 times greater in mass. That is the proton. Is that much greater than the electron? Okay. Example two, this was already done for us. I'll just read through it. It said the U.S. national debt as of March 23rd, 2013, round to the nearest dollar was approximately 16 trillion 755 billion. According to the 2012 U.S. Census, there's about 313 million 914 thousand citizens at that time. What is each citizen's approximate share of debt? So the first thing they did was they made those two very large numbers scientific and they became 1.6755 times 10 to the 13 divided by 3.14 times 10 to the 8th there was an approximation there and then they split up the number and the times 10 to the power of the magnitude and separated them and they divided the numbers and got 0.533 so right here this divided by this is this value and it goes on, but they're showing dot, 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 because they're going to approximate. And the rule says to subtract when dividing. So 13 divided by 8, we subtract, and we get 10 to the 5th. And that would move the decimal five places to the right. Four places would put me at the 6, and I need to go one more. So it's approximately 53,360. What that means is each person, each household would have to pay. Oh, each U.S. citizen share, not household. So if you were a family of four, you would have to pay $53,360 times four to get out of our national debt. Okay, scary stuff. Exercise five. The geography or the geographic area of California is 163,696 square miles. 
and the geographic area geographic area of the U.S. is 3,794,101 square miles. Let's round off these figures to 1.637. So they rounded here, and I'm still seeing trouble with this. If the number is 5 or greater, you round up. And if the number is 4 or less, you round off or truncate. Okay, so that's where we're rounding. So be careful with your rounding. This is not 1636. The 9 makes the 6 is 7. In terms of area, roughly estimate how many Californians would make up one U.S. How many Californias? Then compute the answer to the nearest ones. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide. It's going to be the U.S. divided by California. And that's going to be how many Californias will make it up. So that's our setup. So I'm going to take the U.S., which is 3.794. times 10 to the 6 and divide by 1.637 times 10 to the 5th. That's going to equal 3.794 divided by 1.637. I'm just following that diagram that was prior. So what I'm doing is following the example they did here and I'm just following these steps. Okay. So that's going to be times 10 to the 6 over 10 to the 5. That is going to re equal, and let me get my calculator. Okay, so it comes out to be 2.3176, and that's as far as I'm going to go. 2.31765, so I'm going to say 2.3177. 2.3177 times 10 to the power of... 6 minus 5. Okay. Actually, let me get rid of this equal sign. And I'll just move all of this over here. That comes out to be 2.3177 times 10 to the 6 minus 5, which is 2.3177 times 10 to the 6 minus 5, which is 1, which would move the decimal one place to the right. So that's approximately 23.18, just rounding it again. So it would take approximately 23 Californias to equal one United States. Okay, exercise six. Okay, here is exercise six. The average distance from Earth to the moon is about 3.84 times 10 to the fifth kilometers. And the distance from Earth to Mars is approximately 9.24 times 10 to the 7th kilometers in year 2014. On this simplistic level, how much farther is traveling from Earth to Mars than from Earth to the Moon? Okay, so let's put this into perspective. And I'm going to draw a picture. Okay, so here is Earth. Okay, and if the Moon is over here, this is the Moon. Obviously, the moon's closer to Earth than Mars because the moon is really big in the sky, and Mars is like a star if you can see it at all. So let's say Mars is over here. Okay. And this is Marvin the Martian. Hey, okay, there's Mars. So what this is saying is the distance from Earth to the moon, the average distance, because obviously it gets closer and further depending on the time of year and so forth, is 3.84 times 10 to the fifth power. That is this distance right here from the Earth to the moon. And then it says the distance from Earth to Mars is approximately 9.24 times 10 to the seven kilometers. And that was in 2014. I better make a better five. I couldn't even read my own writing. That is a five kilometers. Okay, so there's the distance of the moon to Earth, and this is the distance of Mars to Earth. On this simplistic level, how much farther is traveling from Earth to Mars than Earth to the moon? Okay, so that's a subtraction problem. 
if Earth to the moon is this distance right here, then that would be about this distance right here. And I want to know how much further, so I want to know the, the remainder. So I'm going to take the distance of Mars, 9.24 times 10 to the seventh power, and I'm going to subtract the distance to the moon, which was 3.84 times 10 to the fifth. All right, now, you should all be aware now, since we've done many of these, I cannot subtract these because my magnitudes are not equivalent. So I'm going to rewrite these at, with equivalent magnitudes. I'm going to make the 5 a 7. So I'm going to leave the distance to Mars alone. So it's 9.24 times 10 to the 7. I want times, let me change to red. I want times 10 to the 7 to be my magnitude of my distance to the moon. And so in order to make that 7, that means I've got to move the decimal. Now I'm going to re-explain re this down here. 3.84 times 10 to the 5 equals 384, the decimal here, moving it five places to the right. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's 384,000 kilometers. Well, if I make that 10 to the 7th, and I still want this number, that means I have to move the decimal seven places, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, where it was, but 6, 7, so I've got to move it two more places. So I've got to move it two places to the left. So 3.84 times 10 to the 5 is equivalent to um, 0 0.0384. So I'm going to move this one two places. It's going to be not 3.84, but 1, 2, and it's going to be 0 .0, 0 0.0384. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite this so it lines up. So this was 4. And I'm going to write times 10 to the 7th all the way over here. And line these up, because I don't have enough room here. I want to line up my values. So that is 8, 4 here now. And just so I have numbers sitting there, I'll put 0, 0 there. So 3.84, it was what it was. And I moved it two decimal places to the left, which adds 2 to my magnitude. So now my magnitudes are equivalent. And I'm going to end up with 10 to the 7th power. And I'm subtracting, so I need to borrow. And 10 minus 4 is 6, 9 minus 8 is 1, 3 minus 3 is 0, 2 minus 0 is 2, and 9 minus 0 is 9. So the distance from the, the remainder, which would be if the moon were here, the distance from the moon to Mars, if I move the moon between, would be 9.2016 times 10 to the 7 kilometers, or kilometers. And that is the answer to this question. That is the end of lesson 11. Go to your problem set.